So today what I'm going to be talking about is blind faith. If you are taking notes, if you are taking notes, the first thing you can write down is blind faith. Everyone say blind faith. Blind faith. <clears throat> awesome. I found, I found my message too, by the way, so we good. Blind faith. I will not preach long today because we got baptisms after service, but I will preach strong. Blind faith faith. And, 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 and what does this have to do with overflow before I get started? It has everything to do in overflow. So as I preach, I got a couple of messages that I'm going to be preaching on. Next week could be a really good message. So I got a couple things that I want to share that I feel like is going to cause you to have overflow in your life. And one of the first things you need in your life to have overflow is faith. Everyone say faith. faith. Say, I have faith to believe. believe. Time out. Before I start preaching to y'all, anyone that knows me knows I'm a holler back what? That's real simple. That just means when I preach you. So you got to be like, come on with it. Preach that. Let's go. Oh, come on. Somebody scream something at me. When you do that, I preach better and shorter. When you do it, I preach worse and longer. And I just feel like y'all sleeping. Y'all going to have to wake up because I'm crunk this morning. All right. We cool. So blind faith. Blind faith is what I'm talking about. And, 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 the, and the true essence of faith is blind. That you will never have faith to truly see. And many of us don't have faith because we don't want to trust God. We want to trust what we see. We don't want to trust God. We want to trust our eyes. We don't want to trust God. We want to trust our systems. We don't want to trust God. We want to trust our job. We don't want to trust God. We want to trust our family. We don't want to trust God. We want to trust our relationships. And God is saying, you got to have blind faith. In other words, when I call you to do something, it won't make sense and it won't make sight. When I call you to do something, it won't make sense and it won't make sight. You won't be able to see it with your physical eyes. The very essence of faith is you can't see it. And God is saying, I'm walking you into some territories. I'm calling you out upon the deep. I'm calling you into things you won't see. So God is calling a version of you out of you. And when you look in the mirror, you will not see what God's called. And you got to say, do I have faith to believe? Am I going to walk in what God's called me to walk in, even though I can't see it, even though I can't taste it, even though I can't trace it? And you got to say, God, I still have faith to believe. I'm still going to walk into the unknown. I'm still going to be obedient and sacrifice. I will trust you, God, even when I can't trace you. That is my faith. And I'm telling you, if you're going to overflow in your life, it's not going to be because everything looks good or everything lines up or the bank account looks right or the opportunity looks right or you have all of your boxes checked and all your T's and I's dotted and crossed. It will not look like that. God will tell you to do something and it will look impossible. It will look impossible because if God calls you to do something that you can do, why do you need faith? When God calls you to do something, it will not be something you can do without him. Anything that requires faith requires God. Anything that requires faith requires God. And God is saying, I'm going to call you into some areas. I'm going to call you into some, some things. I'm going to send you to some places that will require my presence. You have to have faith. Now, what is faith? And I heard another pastor say, and I love it. What is faith? Faith is acting like it is so, even when it ain't so, in order that it may be so, simply because God says so. Let me do it again because you missed it. Let's go in the reverse. <laughs> what is faith? Faith is acting like it is so, even when it ain't so, in order that it may be so, simply because God says so. Translation, faith is acting like God is telling the truth because he is telling the truth. Faith means I'm going to walk because God said it. I'm going to move because God said it. I'm going to believe because God said it. I'm going to do whatever he's called me to do because he said it. That's it. Not because it looks right. Not because it's good for business. Not because it's a smart opportunity. I'm going to do it because God said it. And that, my friend, is faith. If you have your Bibles, go to Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to dig into this thing. Now, why is it so important as you guys are turning that we have faith? It's because we cannot overflow and we cannot grow without faith. If I ask you, are you growing in God? If you say yes, are you getting taller? Is your hair getting longer? Is your lashes stretching out? I mean, maybe Fee Michelle can make that happen, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? Some girls are like, I can make my lashes stretch, Pastor. Don't play with me. Um, but the truth is, if you are growing, you're growing in faith. Do you want to know the difference between me today and me 15 years ago? It's 15 years ago, I didn't trust God with my life, and I do today. The difference between me today and me a year ago is today I trust God more than I did a year ago. 
That's all a mature believer is. What's growing is your trust in God. How much do you trust God? In other words, what's tithing? All tithing is is I fully trust God for my provision. There's a point I didn't tithe because I didn't. I trust my bank. Well, what is giving your relationship over to God means? It means I fully trust God in my relationship. When you take control of your relationship, it means I'm a little smarter than God when it comes to dating. So I'm going to trust me and my game and my skills. You ain't even got no game. However, I'm going to trust me and my game and my skills and my knowledge and what my homegirls them said. And you stay getting broke up with. Okay, let me get. I'm, I'm in somebody's house. Let me move on. Uh, let's go to Hebrews. Cause let, let me get out your house. Um, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence, everyone say evidence, evidence. of things not what? Seen, which means you got to have blind faith. It says, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made from things which are visible. Okay, let me break this down. It's saying that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Let's deal with this word substance for a minute. Substance, substance, substance. You cannot have faith without having substance. You cannot have faith without having substance. Faith has to have substance. So in other words, God isn't hocus pocus and he isn't magic. Whenever he's going to do something, there is is a substance. There's a material. There's a substance. So in other words, when God creates something, he creates something out of substance. If you look at this table, the substance of this table is a tree. There was once a tree, and now the tree became a table. Everything has substance. If you look at your car, it's composed of plastic, metal, electrical wires. It's composed of a lot of things, and all the things it's made of is the substance of it. If you look at an animal, the substance of an animal is dirt. If you look at a fish, the substance of a fish is water. Everything has to have substance. So whenever God is getting ready to do something, he first creates substance before he shows you the story. There will always be substance. There will be material. There will be something. So God says, I can't just bless you. I have to first send my word and my word is your substance. And then out of my word, I create blessing. I can't just heal you. I have to send instruction. And out of the instruction, I take the instruction and then I use it as substance to bring forth your healing. So God says, this is not magic because before every miracle, before every sign, before every wonder, the first has to be substance. So what substance? Substance is the word of God. It's the word of God. So you can't believe for something, pray for something, fast for something, and intercede for something you don't have a word for. Because the word is the substance. That's why it says faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the what? Word of God. Which means you can't even have faith because you don't have substance. And you don't have substance because you don't got a word. And God is saying, when you get the word of God, download it on the inside of you. That is your substance. And that is what God uses to create a miracle. That's what he uses to create a sign and a wonder. That is your substance. So you got to have the word of God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. This is why you have to be at church. This is why you have to read your Bible. This is why you have to be in prayer and in the presence of God because you have to know the word of God because the word of God is the substance of God. And without the substance of God, you cannot have a miracle from God. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. So you have this hope and faith is your substance. But then it says it's the evidence of things not seen. And why did it say it's the evidence? It's because your eyes is what you use for evidence. Your eyes is what you use for evidence. In other words, if someone come to you and they're like, hey, y'all, I just want you to know that, like, you know, man, God is really blessing me. And you're like, okay, what you got? You got a new house. You got a new car. You got more money. You're looking for something to measure what they just said. You're looking for evidence. And if someone has no evidence, you don't believe them. Because they don't have no evidence. And, and, and the Bible says faith is the evidence of things not seen. Which means I can come to you guys right now and say this church is packed out and it's reaching this city and it's reaching the world. And some of you guys right now is like, let me go look at their Instagram and see how many followers they got. Let me go to their Facebook and see how many views they got last week. You're looking for evidence. I just gave it to you. Because I said, God said, we're going to touch this city. 
And that's all the evidence I need. I don't need Facebook. I don't need Instagram. I don't need your approval. I don't need my cousin approval and my mom and them. I got God them, the Holy Spirit them, the Father them. And if they said it's going to happen, it has to happen because I got a word from God. Oh, if you say I got a word from God, give God a shout of praise. I got a word from God, and that's all I need. And I'm telling you, I will go into the unknown with a word. I don't need the money. I don't need a check. I need a word. And too many of you guys are looking for things. If I had the money, I would go do it. You ain't going to ever have the money. You will never have the money. Want me to tell you why? Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The moment you have the money, you will trust it. And the moment you trust money, you don't need faith. Which means he'll never give you the money. Anytime God wants to move, he will be sure to make sure you are underqualified and unequipped and under-resourced. And that's why most of us don't step out. We don't build nothing. We don't do nothing because we don't have anything we can see. But faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And God says something. God says, I know you trust your money. I know you trust what you can see. But I need you to trust me because let me tell you something about me that you may not know. God says, my word don't return void. See, your bank account may return void. Your situation may return void. Your cousin may return void. But God's word don't return void. In other words, if God says, I am going to heal you. I don't care what the doctor said or the medical said. They may return void. But if God says he's going to heal you, guess what he does? He sends a word. And his word goes out in the universe. And it grabs your healing and your miracle. And it says it returns to God with something in his hands. So when God speaks a word, the word goes out. It gets what God spoke and it brings it back to God. And if you trust God, then at that point, God will bring it down to you. So the moment God speaks, his word goes out and it grabs what God said. And now your faith and obedience determines if what God said comes to you. And there's been things in heaven that God's word has grabbed that you never, ever saw because you ain't got no faith. And the reason why you ain't got no faith is because you got two big eyes. And what you got to understand about faith is your eyes is the enemy to faith. Your eyes is the enemy to faith. Most people thought the opposite of faith was doubt. No, the opposite of faith is sight. Your eyes are the enemy to faith because the moment you see, you believe. And God says, I want you to believe without seeing. Let, let me say this to you. Um, where, where, where's Joanna? Is Joanna in here? Can you come up here? We're going to break this down a little bit. Can we break it down? We're going to break this down. All right, come here, Joanna. I want you to come stand right here, huh? Now, I'm going to need you to take your glasses off. Look, I just took away some of her sin. She's like, oh, God. Oh, God. I just went from 2020 to, th- I don't know, any, anybody, some eye people, what she just got from 2020 to what? 1515? Okay, my God, I don't know what that means. But she just got downgraded. Now, even in her compromised state, uh, turn this way. If I asked you, could you walk to that guitar, do you think you can make it there? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay, well, there's something shining. If I asked you to go touch that light over there, can you walk over there and touch that light for me? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Now, look, she comforted. Yeah. I need you to put this on your eyes. And it match her outfit, y'all. This is an original cheater girl right here. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Now, she felt comfortable. Yeah, I'll go. She was excited to go to the light. It was shining, and she figured she can easily make it to the light. Now, I got a question. If I ask you to walk to the light now, do you think you can make it? Do you want to walk to the light right now? (laughs) uh, To be honest, you feel most comfortable just standing where you are, huh? Because you ain't trying to fall in front of all these folks, right? That's kind of scary, right? You was confident you would step out of it when you saw it, but now that you don't see it, you just want to chill, right? Now, 
She is froze in a state. And she is paused. And this is what most of you guys look like in the spirit. When God comes to you, he speaks to you about that business. He speaks to you about that calling. He speaks to you about your kid. He speaks to you about your relationship. And you freeze because you can't see. And because you can't see, you don't walk in faith. And now you want to stand still when God is asking you to press on. Now you want to stand still and God's asking you to move. Now you want to sit and freeze and not obey God because you can't see. And this is what the church looks like right here. Not walking out on your promise, not walking out on your gifting, not walking out on your ministry, not walking out on the call of God because you can't see. But I want to tell you something that you may not know. You don't need to see. Because though her eyes are covered, her ears are still open. And I got good news for you. Faith don't come by seeing. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. So to make it to that light, she don't have to see it shine. She just have to hear clear instruction from a shepherd. And I want you to know, Psalm 28 says, the Lord is my shepherd. Which means he's going to lead you. You shall not want. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to protect you. But the reason why the shepherd can't lead you is because you don't trust him. So now, this is the posture that God will put every believer in. Blinded. And, and, and to show you what this looks like practically, this, just, this is just an empty bank account. This is just not the right resources. This is just, there is no good man around Texarkana, but God said you're going to be married. I ain't finna play with y'all today. That's what this is. This is, I've never done it before, and I'm scared. I don't know if I'll fail or not. You already fell, and you might as well step out. I'm not afraid to fail. I'm afraid to sit through this life, never stepping out, never going for it, never trusting God. That's what I'm afraid of. So you saying you have faith to believe and that God has all you need and that miracle signs and wonders follow you, but do you really believe it? Because if you do, why do you sit froze? Why do you sit froze when God is asking you to move? Now, when God calls you to do something, church, he is going to blind you. Not physically, but he is going to blind you in a way where what he's called you to do don't visibly make sense. And now she's called to walk to this light, and it makes no sense. But God says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Even when I was looking for God, he wasn't in the quake, he wasn't in the fire, he wasn't in the wind. He was in a small still what? Voice, voice, voice. Do you have faith to believe that God has all you need? Even protection, provision, navigation? Okay, we're going to see. Now, I need you to take some bold steps. See, see, when you, when you blind, you, I need you to take some bold steps forward. Bold, bold, bold. Keep walking, keep walking. I need you to stop. I need you to turn to the right a little bit. Nope, oh, wrong way. Yep. See, God, I got to correct you. Stop right there. Turn to the left a little more. Nope, but wrong way. See, God has to do it. Now, take a couple steps forward. Take two steps. Take one more. Look, she's scared. Look, this how y'all be. This how y'all be. God call you to step out. You. Ain't no ice up here. Why are you walking like that? But when she can see, she was all... Now, I see one of them. Walk it out. Now, Southside, walk it out. No, I'm playing. <laughs> and then God is funny. Let me tell you how God's going to do you. He's going to just build you up one step at a time. Take another step forward. Look, like anxiety's setting in now. You're like, how far away am I? You can be a foot away from the light or 20 feet. You have no idea. God says, take another step forward. All right, anyways. I'm going to just leave her there because God does that to us. And you got to be willing to trust God. You got to be willing to step out. You got to be willing to walk. You got to be willing to move. You got to be willing to trust God. You have to have blind faith because if it ain't blind, it ain't faith. 
And sometimes, just because you can't see, don't mean God's going to rush the process. Because if you're truly able to trust God, though you can't see, you should still be content because you know he won't forget about you. He won't leave you and he won't forsake you. So when God is asking you to step out, this is why you're not stepping out. This is why you're not making your move is because you don't know what God is doing. And you have to trust him. Faith is the evidence. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. She has evidence because she has my words. And my words is proof that she will make it to her destination. You may not have the evidence. You may look underqualified. Everybody around you may look like they have a better opportunity at getting to this. They may have the connections. I'm telling you, you may not have the education. You may not have the degree. You don't need a degree or a PhD. You got a G-O-D, and that's all you need. I got a G-O-D. You down with G-O-D? Yeah, you know me. You down. I'm playing, y'all. I'm acting up because I can see this morning. Amen. I got on my spectacles. So there's times where you're blind and God walks you out. And he don't immediately walk you to the promise. Sometimes he develops patience right before the promise. And now at this point, you got to trust God. This is very awkward for you. You are blinded and everyone's looking at you. This is how it feels when you're called by God. Yeah. That you are blinded and everyone's watching you and you can't see anything. Yeah. Take one more step forward. Take half a step. Now, God is detailed. Take your right hand and start bending it down. Your right hand, start leaning down a little bit. All right, take your right hand to the left a little bit. Now, down more. You feel that light? There it is. She touched the light. Come on, y'all. Make some noise for Joe. You can, you can unblind yourself now, Joe. Now, she made it exactly where she was intended to be without sight. But guess what she had to have to make it from here to there? She had to have faith. Oh, come on, somebody. Give God a shout of praise. You can be seated. She need her glasses, so she may not make it. Praise God. <laughs> the Lord can bless your prescription. Amen. Um, she like, hold up. Am I still blindfolded or no? Um, so check this out, church. Check this out. Check this out. I've heard a lot of pastors, they, they say things like, oh, faith is like sitting in a chair. Because you don't know if the chair will hold you and if it will sustain you and if it will protect you. That ain't faith because I can see the chair. And I've been sitting in chairs my whole life. I don't need faith to sit in a chair. Anybody can sit in a chair. I trust the chair. I can see the structure of the chair. This ain't faith. Faith is not like sitting in a chair. Faith is when God calls you over here and he tells you to sit and there ain't a chair. That's faith. When God says sit down and you like, this is faith. Not that. This is faith right here. And you're trusting God to sustain you, not something physically that you can see that sustains you your whole life. That is faith. And God is asking some of you guys to sit on his word, but you don't want to sit on his word because you want to sit on a chair. You want to sit on something you can see. You want to sit on something you're familiar with. And God is saying, if you're going to follow me, you will never, ever walk in the familiar. It will always be unfamiliar. You have to have Blind faith. I'm going to share a story of you of someone having blind faith, and we'll close out the sermon. <clears throat> David. David. David is out shepherding sheep. And yeah, he killed a lion and a bear. Cool. But all of a sudden, he's taking bread and cheese to his brothers. He was the inventor of pizza, bread and cheese. Praise God. <laughs> he's taking bread and cheese to his brothers. And he hears about this Goliath taunting the armies of God. And nobody will fight this giant. Nobody will step out. Nobody had faith to believe. They looked at Goliath, and their sight told them that he is bigger, he is stronger, he's a champion from youth, which means he ain't never lost a battle. And everybody that stepped in his path has got slayed. 
Now, there were some brave men, I believe, in the, in, the, in the tribe of Israel that still wouldn't have been afraid of that. But what they were truly afraid of was the stakes. The stakes were high because it was, a, it was a battle of representation. What would happen is two kings would be, at, they'll have beef, modern day term, and two kings would have beef. And what would end up happening is they would say, hmm, you're prosperous, we're prosperous and if we go to war, you're going to lose resources, food. You're going to lose men. There's going to be families that's torn apart. And hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, are going to die. Which means there's an easier way to fight the battle for this land and to figure out who is enslaved to who. And what they would do is they would have the principle of representation. Which means you get your best warrior, we get our best warrior. They fight, and whoever wins represents his people. We see this in the beginning because you ask, why am I born in sin, shape, and iniquity? It's because God used the principle of representation. The Adam and Eve represented the human race. And when they sinned and fell to Satan, all of us was born in sin. And that's why you have to accept Jesus is because when he triumphed over sin and he cut off the head of sin, when you trust Jesus, now you are saved because you're joint heirs with Christ. So Adam represented you in defeat, and Jesus represented Presents you in victory. And this is the principle of representation. So when kings would fight wars, they would have their best soldier represent them. And I don't know this. This is my biblical imagination. But I'm sure when they came up with this agreement, they didn't see Goliath. He was somewhere off. I'm, I'm sure he was not at the scene. Because if they would have saw Goliath, they'd be like, no, nah, we're just going to war, bro. We're not going to have your best versus our best. So they didn't see Goliath. So they probably agreed to this. Saul was a pretty big guy. And when they agreed to this, they're like, all right, let's go. So they got their best warrior. And then they looked at Goliath, and he was almost tall as a basketball rim. He was big. He was strong. He had six fingers and six toes. I mean, this dude was undefeated. He was talking to people of God. That's dramatic, huh? Yeah, I figured. Um, so he's doing all of that, and now they're terrified not only to die to Goliath, but if I lose my memory is forever tarnished because my people are enslaved. We lose our land. We lose our, our wealth, our fortune. We lose everything in this battle. And they didn't have the courage. And now you have a little teenager stepping out. He's saying, let me go. I'll fight the giant. And David knew something that they didn't know. David said, I got faith to believe that God has all I need. And I'm telling you, miracles, signs, and wonders follow me. And when I fight this giant, he is coming down because I'm not just fighting for victory. I'm fighting from victory. And he knew something that the other ones didn't know. He knew that God will fight the giant because God said, whoever is your enemy will be my enemy. And he said, I will fight for you if you would be my people. In other words, God said, the battle is mine. But the reason why nobody wanted to fight it is because that was a blindfolded statement. Because when I look with my eyes, the battle looked like Goliath. God, I hear you, but I don't see you, and I see him, amen? And Goliath over here talking about, ain't nothing between us but space and air, and I just sucked that up. What's up? You know what I'm saying? So, so I hear what you're saying, God, but I don't see you, and I see him. And God was asking them to fight blind. And they're already saying, I can't even fight this thing seeing. How can I fight this thing blind? And the devil's, remember this, and I'm going to get ready to close. The devil's greatest tactic is his giant. When all else fails, the devil sends a giant and it is big and it's intimidating and it's strong and you can clearly see that it's stronger than you and nobody wanted to fight something that they can clearly see that was stronger than them except for David David said I'll go let me fight this giant I'll take this giant down I'm telling you David was like I hit a giant I knock a giant out. I hit a giant. I knock a giant out. I hit a giant. I knock a giant out. Hit a giant in his mouth and knock his teeth out. I'm playing. I used to freestyle. I used to freestyle back in my football days, y'all. So, David said, I knocked that giant out. And let me tell you something. 
A person of fear looks at a giant and says he's too big to hit. But a person of faith looks at a giant and says he's too big to miss. How do you see your giant? Do you see it as something that's too big to hit? Or do you see it as something that's too big to miss? Because God is with me and God never misses and he never loses a battle. And if God fights for me and if God beats for me, who can be against me? So at this particular point, David went. You guys know the story. He got five smooth stones. He knocked out Goliath, cut his head off. He defeated the giant, and he freed his people. And it was a picture of Jesus because he would come and cut the head of sin off, and he would defeat the giant of sin that would taunt us. But my part of this is this. We see the devil's tactic. He's always sending the giant. Before your breakthrough, you will have to break through a giant. Before your breakthrough, you will have to break through a giant, which means God is calling you to be a woman of God. I don't know what your giant is. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's a lack of resources. Maybe it's the unknown. Maybe you're afraid of getting to know new people. Whatever that giant is, we'll be standing. God is calling some of you guys to step out in business. I don't know if you don't have the money. I don't know if you don't have the education. I don't know if everyone in your family has failed. It will be a giant standing before your breakthrough. And my question for you is, what will you do with your giant? Will you be like the children of Israel and run from it? Or will you be like David and run towards it? What will you do with your giant? And you have to identify your giant. What is the giant in your life? And what will you do with it? And in order to defeat that giant, you need blind faith. You need blind faith. It's not going to look right. It's not going to make sense. It's not going to add up. It's not going to line up. You have to trust God even when you can't trace him. So here's the thing you have to know about a giant. is every time God is calling you to be something, do something, or go somewhere, there's always a giant. And he is standing in front of your breakthrough in your promise. And you have to ask the question, are you going to get through this giant to take ground or are you going to retreat? And there's too many people in the house of God that's been retreating. I got a question for you. Have you retreated? God has called you to be a worshiper. Have you ran from the call? God has called you to be a man of God. Have you ran from him? He's called you to be the father that covers your family and lead them in the things of God. Are you running from it or running towards it? He's called you to serve in the church. Are you serving? Are you saying, oh, they don't need me, and I made mistakes in the past, and I'm just afraid to do that again? What are you doing with your giant? I want to tell you something you need to do. You need to be like David. You need to attack your giant quick. Whenever you're afraid of something, don't sit there because fear builds. I remember when I played football, and on the other team, I would see a big old giant. I mean, you know some big brothers in football. And something I would have to do is the first play of the game, I would immediately go to the biggest person, and I would hit them. And the reason why I would do that is not, not for, even, for me. Because if they knock me down, I'm like, I can take it. If I knock them down, I'm like, they can't take it. Whatever it is, I have to quickly experience that so I can gather myself. And I don't know what your giant is, but you need to attack it quick. David didn't procrastinate. He didn't wait. Immediately he seized this giant. Because fear gets stronger with time. So I don't know what your giant is in, what it is in here today, but you need to quickly, I would advise you today, attack your giant. Because if you don't do it, it's going to grow in your mind. And when you maximize the size of your giant, you minimize the size of your God. But when you maximize the size of your God, you minimize the size of your giant. Attack your giant quickly. And the last thing I want to say, and I got something I want to show you guys. Most of your giants in this room, most of your giants, I preached all that to get you here. Most of your giants are standing in the way of your next faith step. Most of your giants, I don't know what your faith, some of you guys need to serve in church, some of you guys need to drop sin, some of you guys need to drop porn, some of you guys need to drop lust, some of you guys need to step out, some of you guys need need, need to begin to pray and, and get involved and serve, some of you guys need to start a business, some of you guys need to lead your family. Some of you guys need to commit. Some of you guys need to get baptized. And some of you guys don't want to get baptized because you feel like if I get baptized, I have just became public with Jesus. And I'm not ready for that because I still struggle with sin. Giant. Standing in front of you, taunting you, telling you you will never be who God has called you to be. And you will never get to where God has called you to get to. And that giant is causing you to have blind faith because it's so big you can't see behind it. 
And you got to ask yourself a question. Do you have faith to believe that God has all you need and that miracle signs and wonders will follow you? Because in order to defeat your giant, it's going to require a miracle. David didn't have the skill to defeat Goliath. No, 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 no. Goliath was a champion from his youth. God brought that giant down. God brought it down. I want to tell you something, church. God will bring down your giant. And guess what? It's two phases to this. It's because God has already brought down your giant. You want to know something about your giant? Your giant died already. It died. Your giant was executed on the cross. Every giant, every fear, every disease, every sickness, every doubt, all pain, anxiety, depression, Fear, everything was put on that cross and executed. Well, Pastor KJ, if it was dead, why is it clearly taunting me? It's because dead giants still talk. Dead giants still talk. And though your giant is dead, it is still deadly. Remember, I was in the California desert one day, and when I was in this desert, I was with a friend of mine. He knew a lot about snakes, and there was a rattlesnake, and he was dead, and I was like, I can never pick up one alive, so let me go grab this dead rattlesnake, and I remember I ran towards it. He said, stop. I'm like, it's dead. He said, kind of. I said, kind of. I mean, Look at his brains. Someone stepped on this thing, and he got a stick, and he hit the back of his tail, and that dead rattlesnake turned around and lunged and bit and venom came out his mouth and I was like oh my gosh and he said if it would have bit you you would have got infected and had to go and you would have had to go to the hospital by a dead snake why because though it's dead it's still deadly because though it's dead it still has venom inside of it and though it's dead the reflexes of it still will strike at you and God is saying fear is dead but if you touch it or get too close to it, it can still bite you. Anxiety is dead, but if you get too close to it, it can still bite you. I'm telling you right now, depression is dead because Jesus killed it. But if you get too close to it, it can still bite you. And God said, though your giant is dead, it is still deadly. Which means just because Jesus killed it don't mean you, have to, don't, mean you don't have to respect it. And don't mean you don't have to properly attack it. And I want to tell you something. Attack your giant before your giant attack you. Attack it. Attack it. Don't wait. Don't be on defense. Be on offense. Attack your giant. And the biggest giant in your life is what's stopping you from faith. What is stopping you from faith? I don't know where you need to go in faith. Some of you guys need to start giving because you don't tithe. Some of you guys need to start serving because you don't serve. Some of you guys need to start reading your Bible because you don't read your Bible. Some of you guys stand in worship and you're like... I'm not emotional. It's for these emotional people. I got it together. I don't have to worship. Oh, really? Really now? You better be careful because the Bible says everybody in heaven was worshiping, crying out holy. And if everybody was doing it and you won't do it, let me stop. <laughs> I don't know if you was there, amen? <laughs> I'm playing. But what I'm saying, church, is this. What is your next faith step? Don't leave this room without knowing it. And for some of you guys, it's baptism. And when you face your giant, I'm telling you, everything changes. I'm going to show you some people on the screen last week that faced their giant. And I want you to see what happened. Through my adult life, I've gone straight away, came back, gone straight away, came back. I've just been asking the Lord for more. Lord, I just want you to take everything away that is not of you. I battled a 19 year drug addiction. In nine days, I'll have seven months clean. Since I was 16, I was diagnosed with lupus, and I've been living in fear. 
I'm tired of living in fear and I don't want to be fearful no more. I just want to give it all to God and let him heal me. I want you to know something. You are standing in a miracle. And this is just the beginning. And I just want you to know that I have faith to believe that he has all that I need and that miracles, signs and wonders follow me. It follows you. It follows this church. The best is yet to come. Your healing, your freedom, your liberation and your breakthrough is coming. There will be no bondage, no shame, no stain. So let's give our king a shout of praise. I'm finna step in the overflow. I'm finna step out into the things of God. I'm about to face my giant. No more fear. I'm walking out to the next level. I'm taking my faith journey serious. I'm stepping out. Even if I gotta go blind, I'm gonna go. Even if I gotta go crawling, I'm gonna go. Even if I gotta go limping, I'm gonna go. I'm telling you, I'm about to overflow and no devil in hell will stop me. I'm getting my blessing. I'm getting my breakthrough. I'm getting my freedom. I'm getting my liberation. In the name of Jesus, oh, give God a shout of praise in this place. If you say you're taking your faith step, I say give God a shout of praise in this place.